Ladies and gentlemen, we won a game. Hi, I'm Weston. I love talking about the Astros, and today I'm recapping game 43 of the regular season, the second game in today's doubleheader, and the Astros after a six-game skid, which included, I believe, a five-game sweep by the Angels. We have won a game. And boy, is that a relief to say after such a bad skid we had. This was a crucial game. We could not already lose this series to the Athletics. That would have been awful if we already if the series was already over and we'd already lost it. Granted, we're still down uh, 2-1 in the series against the Athletics right now in the five games that we have against them, but we can make up a little bit of that ground and try to make a run at the division title. I'm not sure if that'll happen at this point, given that we lost a couple of crucial games over the past couple days. But it's still in play, especially with two more against the Athletics. Uh, so I'm going to get into the breakdown right now. Starting pitcher was Paul DeYoung. And I say par starting pitcher kind of loosely. It wasn't an opener. It wasn't a starting pitcher. It was a bullpen game, which the Astros have done a few bullpen games the past few years. Um, it's not something we're opposed to. And he was, eh, he was okay. I have a hard time giving these single A and barely in double A pitchers a hard time just because I look at the situation they pitched in last year where they're facing, I don't mean this is an insult to minor league players. I understand they're infinitely better than I ever will be. But when they go from facing Joe Schmo, 19 year old kid to facing professional hitters at the major league level, I have a hard time criticizing them too bad. And I don't, feel it right especially this year where they're being thrust into a situation where we are only using them because our bullpen and our roster is destroyed so when i say this i don't mean this is a bad thing and he has stuff that makes me go huh that could be good there are a few pitches that he threw that i was like that's a really nice pitch uh paul de young was okay he went three innings he gave up four runs he had one walk and three strikeouts i like the one walk he didn't give up any he only gave up one walk that is a positive I'll take the positives where I can find them, and my positive for Paul DeYoung is he only walked one batter. Uh, he did give up four runs, though, which looked like it was going to be a death sentence, and I'm going to be honest, being the pessimist that I am deep down in my core, even though I try to be positive on every other part, deep down in my core, I was like, oh boy, we gave up four runs, the game's over. Which, I'll get to that in a second, in what might be the ugliest four-run inning in Astros history. <laughs> I'll get to that in a second. Uh, after Paul DeYoung exited, Brad Peacock came in. I love Brad Peacock. He's awesome. Uh, he went two and a th or two thirds, excuse me, uh, and he struck a guy out. I don't know why we pulled him. And well, let, let me rephrase that. I know why we pulled him. It's because we have platooning. I dislike that argument. I would have been fine letting him roll. He seemed okay. I had no qualms leaving him in there. Uh, Brooks Williams came in for one and a, or one and two thirds, excuse me. And he was fine. Brooks Raley, he continues to make me sad because there's a lot of pitches that I see that I'm like, that plays. That's a good pitch. Those are good pitches. You just got to throw them consistently, which I know that takes a lot for me to say from the position I'm in. But Brooks Raley, if he can get control, which let's be honest, this is a great team for him to get control over any year but right now where he wouldn't be like the main guy being called upon in high leverage situations. But still, he's in a good bullpen with probably the best pitching coach in baseball i don't think that's really a argument to be had there brent strom is truly the best pitching coach and he is really a wizard um so i think there is a possibility that Rayleigh becomes a good relief pitcher down the line uh, i'm hoping for that at least uh like i said he went two and a third then cannolian himself anoli paredes came in and mr cannoli ended up getting the win tonight which i mentioned because I love Anoli Paredes, and I will mention anything he does, because he is a pure individual, and we do not deserve him. <laughs> uh, he ended up going two-thirds of 90s. It got a little dicey. He ended up loading the bases, but he got out of it. He also picked up a strikeout. Again, live arm from that kid. I cannot wait to watch him continue to develop at the major league level, which seemingly is where he's going to get all of his development. Uh, especially after this year, because I don't think we're going to see a pitcher come take his job, and I don't think next year when the season comes back next like spring, I don't think the Astros are going to be able to send him back down just because the fans will love him too much. I mean, he's pitched what 15 innings and he's already becoming a fan favorite. Nah, I don't, I don't think that teams on like everyone, if you're beloved, you're going to stay at the major league level, but Paredes has got good stuff. 
He's got a live arm. He has a great personality, and the fans love him. So I think there is a very good chance that he continues to develop only at the major league level and maybe only spends a couple more, like, short, short stints in the minors if he's having a really rough, or a really rough time. Excuse me. Uh, to finish out the game, Ryan Presley came in. He ended up getting the save tonight. He went in inning, and he got a strikeout. Presley, he didn't look as good as he has in some outings this year, but he looked a whole lot better than others. Um, he looked fine. I gave up a hit, but he picked himself up. He got two more outs, got out of the game, and what a relief it is to finally be talking about a win when in the past five days I've been talking about losses, most of them heartbreaking. <laughs> uh, the offense. Oh, boy, the offense. Um, is it possible to watch us score four runs and be... L- <laughs> the four-run inning... That is one of the ugliest four-run innings I've ever seen in baseball. Bases get loaded, a Correa hit-by-pitch, RBI, 4-1. Then a Toro walk, 4-2 with an RBI. Then a Garno walk. And now it's 3-4. And then some weird Springer infield hit business. There were shenanigans on that hit by Springer and an RBI um I mean I'll take an ugly win over a pretty loss any day and this was a bit of an ugly win (laughs) because of that inning uh so that was all in the fourth they gave us the four run fourth and then in the top of the seventh Yuli had a sack fly I wish and I know this is nitpicking especially since we ended up winning the game I wish that Stroll would have tagged up and went over to third because that would have given us a six to four lead going into the bottom of the seventh but We ended up winning, so it didn't come back to haunt us. But when the tying run got on base and it brought the winning run to the plate, I was like, I really wish Straw had tagged up and gotten that run. But again, it didn't end up mattering. We won. That's great. We we finally snapped that streak. That was... It is a massive weight to have that off of our shoulders. And I'm super pumped that we got the win tonight. Luis Garcia will be making his first Major League start tomorrow at 9, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. God help me. Thank you so very much for watching. I hope you have an absolutely fantastic day. And as always, go Strokes.